Bike Blogger here, back with some more bike FAQs. Let's get started. Tim Denton writes, I'm in the UK, I'm 53, been pushing pedals since I was 18 months old. Awesome. I've had one accident. Good on you. I mean, <laughs> I have an accident like every year. So one accident and you've been riding for 50, what, one years, 50 50 years, over 50 years, and you've only had one accident? Or maybe you're just saying, let's see here, maybe you're just saying you had one recent accident. But that'd be really impressive if you only had one accident and you've ridden that long. Uh, oh, with a car, okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's good that you haven't had more than one accident with a car, but you have one accident with a car. It only takes one, though, uh, to be killed, so be careful. I've been lucky, but near misses and almost daily, or almost, okay. People driving is horrendous, and it's very off-putting, so I don't have much confidence now but it's not gonna stop me cycling. That's awesome, yeah. So I've had all sorts of, all sorts of accidents and crashes and uh, it's just kind of part of like, you're, if you're out there more, if you're less skilled, if you're taking more risk, you're gonna have more accidents. If you're going faster, you're gonna have more accidents. Um, I always recommend everyone wear a helmet, okay? A helmet is going to protect you more than not wearing a helmet. You know, common sense. Um, let's see, V H H C C B C C C C V G G J C K D V D B B B B B. Just finished my four months hard labor in a factory and got my first road bike. Try to catch the tail of summer. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, new bike, new bikes. I mean, hey, summer's coming up real fast here, uh, guys and gals. Get yourself, uh, get your bike all ready to go. Um, <laughs> you know, pump up those tires. There's not much you need to do if you have a bike now. Uh, there's not much for you really need to do. If you got a mountain bike, there might be a little more maintenance you got to do because mountain bikes are mountain bikes. They're not like mountain bikes of yester, yester, uh, yester century, you know, back in the early 2000s, the 26ers. I had a 26er, um, I don't know how many people call them 26ers. I call them mountain bikes. You know, back in the day, you know, nowadays you got 29ers. Um, getting off topic here, of course, with this comment, but I just like to ramble a little bit with the bike FAQs, bike facts. Um, 27.5, is that going away? Let me know in the comment section below because I've heard that that's kind of run its course and, you know, marketing like road bikes. Most road bikes have disc brakes. I don't find a need for disc brakes. Disc brakes are good. You cannot say disc brakes are worse than rim brakes because they're not. Disc brakes just at what they are, they are a brake and disc brakes are better than rim brakes. They will break, they will <laughs> break, they will stop you uh, more consistently. They just, they, just, they just work better. You know, they'll rub, of course, of course they'll rub. They'll be more tedious to deal with, of course they will. But as a brake, Across the board, they are better brakes, disc brakes are. Um, I prefer rim brakes, which are brakes that use your wheel to stop you, uh, the wheel rim that is. It seems, it just, it's more, it's just more, it just seems simple. I like simple solutions to really simple problems, which is I need to stop. What am I going to do? I'm going to use the material on my wheel that I already have and stop with that, you know, versus, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have another wheel, like a little rotor to stop me. It's like just extra over engineering. I, I don't like that. I like simple solutions to what I see as a simple problem, you know, which is stopping. So I'm just rambling. I'm just ranting a little bit, but, uh, uh, yeah, definitely get your, get your bike all up and ready to go here. Uh, summer is just around the corner. Um, uh, do, do you have more than, uh, do you have a summer bike and a winter bike, you know, so are you getting ready maybe to put away your winter bike? Maybe not completely because it might, you might still be getting a lot of rain or whatever, but I think the snow is pretty much gone in my, uh, neck of the woods. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a rain bike. I did that. I did a previous video about that, which is just basically my normal bike, but it has fenders on it. I mean, you can, you can, do clip on fenders onto a bicycle. You don't need to have a dedicated rain bike, um, especially if you don't live in a really rainy climate, um, in my opinion. But it's always cool to have more bikes, right? It's always cool to have um, just N plus one bikes. Um, so yeah, uh, let's move it on here. Let's move it on. We gotta keep going. Okay, so I, just, I this I immediately I just saw this. Tom Bob, I hate you. So if I do if I do like a down 
arrow. Will that actually appear? Because I don't know, because most people love my videos, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like I always see you know, the thumbs up thing. And what does Facebook do? I'm not on Facebook, but uh, Facebook, they only do thumbs up, right? They don't do thumbs down, right? And I, and I know that I know the YouTube algorithm, the thumbs down and thumbs up mean absolutely nothing. All they mean is whether you give me either one of them, it's going to make my videos more, uh, more popular in the search engine. So either way, you know, it's good for my channel that you do a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So uh, I'm sorry, Tom, I'm going to have to give you a thumbs down on that one just because I don't agree with you because I don't hate myself. Um, uh, anyway, so let's just go back down here a little bit. Zach Z, bike lanes and trails that are covered in thick snow or ice are very annoying. So having snow and ice, especially snow in the road, especially wet snow, it's like riding through mud. So what are you going to do when you ride your bike through mud or sand? There's not much you can do. You either try to cut through it if it's shallow enough. I did a video on this um, recently about uh, bike, uh, winter bike tires. Um, or if it's, if, it's, if it's not, again, not too deep, you could float over it with some really low air pressures and really fat tires. Um, but otherwise, like riding your bike through mud, that's just not really going to work. What, you, what do you need if you're in a really muddy uh, situation. What do you need for that? You need some big wheels or tires, like I said, or you need like, you need like a tank, you know, you need, you need belt drive for your, for your, uh, literally for your wheels, you know, which doesn't exist as far as I'm aware. Although I have, I have actually, when I've typed into Google ice bicycle, I've, I've seen some funny looking bikes that have like skis on them. So that was kind of interesting i think of ice bike as a bike meant for riding on the ice like a studded tire but apparently there's these bikes that you can ride and pedal across frozen lakes and stuff that have like little skis on them or something which looks pretty cool anyway uh, other annoyances this is about my annoying things video it's a very popular video uh, other annoying things about uh, i guess riding a bike um include impatient motorists motors encroaching on bikes yeah yeah the world would be so much better without motorists but we got to learn to live together and trying to shake it off. Um, getting stuck behind a bus, rain, wind, stop signs. Yeah, stop signs are just overly used around where I live. They're so overly used. I see people, I see motorists, you know, blow through stop signs all the time, all the time, you know. It's like, you know, motorists say, oh no, bicyclists are horrible. They're always blowing through stop signs. Again, we're all, I've talked about this before, we are all human beings, okay? Whether you're on a bike or in a car, it seems to be pretty consistent to me motorists blow through stop signs bicyclists may blow through stop signs um i think a motorist is a lot more dangerous than a bike but hey look at yourself you're a pedestrian or there's maybe a mother who's pushing a stroller with a little baby in the stroller if a bicyclist hits that that is going to be very bad situation probably just about as bad as getting hit by a car because uh you can someone both bicyclist and pedestrian can be very seriously injured if they have an accident with one another. So we need to watch out for one another and especially against motorists because motorists can hurt a lot of people and you hear about this all the time. You don't very often hear about terrorists riding their bikes around, you know, machine gunning a bunch of people, although I'm sure it happens. But you often hear about these motorists uh, these terrorists nowadays, you know, driving buses and cars and around and just plowing down pedestrians and cyclists, you know, and it, it's, you know, world news, you know, so, but, you know, it's not against the cars or not against the buses or whatever, you know, it's just human beings off the handle. So, you know, just be reasonable, everybody out there on the road. It's all right. We're all going to get through this together. Just watch out for those potholes, puddles, glass and other debris, flat tires, road construction, door zone, bike lanes, traffic lights, changing lanes before turning, pedestrians in the bike lane, pedestrians hogging up the trail. I always have believed that we need to focus on putting more positive energy into the universe. The universe there's no gain from putting negative energy out there. So I always try to look at the bright side of things, the glass half full sort of 
things because if you're looking for if you're looking to find bad things out there there's a lot of bad things out there but there's also a lot of good things out there and i guess you know i'm getting way off topic with bicycle stuff here but i just want to kind of throw out my my um my philosophy and that is you know just as much as you may really like someone or like something it's it's you got to try to always look at it the good way but there's it's always equaled out by the negativity because you know just as much as you like something when you lose it you'll ju- you'll be just as much sad about losing it but that just means because you were so happy about having it so it works both ways all right so billy t writes are all steel frames equal uh steel frames differ in uh, uh tube wall thicknesses diameters and um uh i don't want to say alloy but uh and uh chemical makeup i don't know uh yes some are lighter weight and some do flex more or less depending on the composition steel is generally heavier than aluminum both are at risk of rust slash corrosion did i spell that right corrosion um because aluminum does not rust aluminum corrodes so aluminum or ox or was it oxidizes or whatever basically um steel steel will turn kind of a uh kind of a reddish uh color when it rusts and then aluminum will kind of get a white powdery sort of look to it um uh however i will say i guess it does depend on where you live if it's really um really snowy or there's a lot of salt on the roads or something. But the first thing that is going to just totally go is not your bicycle frame. It's gonna be all the stuff attached to it. The bolts, the derailers, the uh, the chain, all that stuff's gonna go way before your frame does. So I wouldn't worry so much about the bicycle frame. All right, so Matt YYC writes, sometimes on the bike things just flow and we go by feel. Sometimes we get wake up calls that make us slow down and think so this is from my video uh what you can't see can hurt you so this is where a car just can't s- seem to come out of nowhere and i'm sure as a bis- uh, bicyclist uh, i came out of nowhere on the car because uh you know the, the lane was narrow i was trying to get around a stopped vehicle in front of me and boom it was like whoa i didn't get hurt or anything no one got hurt or anything but uh, it was it was a scary situation, and you know it, it's a, it's a shame that people had to stop in the traffic lane for what I could see is no good reason. Anyway, I had one of those this a.m. Luckily, I'm fine. I'm sure I scared a driver. Next time, I'll do better. Thanks for sharing this one. So I'm just gonna say thanks, Mike or Matt. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Matt. I'm sure we'll all do better next time. Things to be aware. Aware? Is it aware? Or, no, uh, aware is one word. Aware of. All right. Da 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 da. Go streets or. Go ST. Why don't you just ride on the side of the road and not in the middle? Vehicular cycling. Oh my gosh, I've covered this in other bike facts videos. I'm not going to go over it again except to simply say unless the lane is 14 feet wide, look it up. Unless the lane is 14 feet wide, it's unsafe to split a lane. You know, it's unsafe for everybody. The one argument you could give as to why, you know, you would split a lane, you know, partially or whatever, like the motorist would ride half in one lane, half in another lane, uh, shared with the cyclist, would be just so they can get around the cyclist faster um, or more safely, maybe. Um, If it's a two-lane road, 
just switch lanes as you would do normally to get around a regular car. And the positive thing here, if it's a cyclist, yes, you'll come up on them quicker, but you get to pass them quicker. You know, it's not like, there's no reason to be scared of a cyclist, especially if they're not weaving around on the road. If they're going in a straight line, there's nothing to be scared about passing a cyclist. You know, just switch lanes as you would normally when you pass a car. And you guess what? Because you're much faster than the cyclist, you will pass the cyclist much faster than you will trying to pass a car. So it'll be over before you know it. Um, moving on, let's see. Phil Jones, right? You literally got me going last year. How many miles, I think this was, uh, how many miles is my bike commute or something like that? Let's see, what is this video? Um, yeah, so how many miles is your bike commute, kilometers, bike block? So when I did this video, um, start blog, bike blogger, BB. Uh, so yeah, this was, ooh, yeah, this was uh, back in 2016. This was a while ago. Um, and I just mentioned uh, my bike commute was four miles one way. So quite ideal. Oh man, that's like the sweet spot I think for bike commuting, unless you know you want a longer commute or a shorter commute. <laughs> but I think four miles is a great, uh, a great distance for a beginner. Um, less of course for a beginner, but four miles will really be kind of maybe the maximum for most people. Uh, who are just getting started into bike commuting or whatever, riding a bike or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, four miles was my commute. Nowadays, my commute is less, you know, more like two or three miles if I'm going straight to work. But I do like to do, you know, like a, you know, a longer ride, so I will extend it. Um, don't really drive to work anymore. About 16 to 20 kilometers each way. That's 30 to 40 minutes each way. Love it. That's awesome, Phil Jones. I'm so happy that uh, I got to do a little heart for that one. Uh, I do love it when I'll do a thumbs up too. Can I do a thumbs down? I can do thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. No, that's definitely a thumbs up. Uh oh, well, now let me do a thumbs down. Oh, okay. Oh, that scared me. I thought I wasn't going to be able to. Okay, it's, it's thumbs up, thumbs up. Thank you, Phil Jones. That's so cool. I'm so happy that's uh, that's that's a. Uh, uh, man, I love to aspire. Is it aspire or inspire? I think it's inspire. Inspire other people. Thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, one thing I wish on YouTube is when you post a comment like that, I could within here. Oh, wait, maybe I scroll over. No, no. I wish I could go and edit within here. And I don't know why you can't. However, I am in the old YouTube. This is the YouTube Classic or whatever, which I much I really like YouTube Classic. Uh, if you're a YouTube creator, or you do your own videos, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Basically, this is the old-fashioned what YouTube has looked like for years, at least since I've been doing videos for over five years now. Uh, but now they've changed it to YouTube Creator Studio, which... I have I have opted out of that. I have chosen to stick with the old version just because it it's simple, it works. I don't see a need to do anything differently. But I'm gonna have to learn, just like we all have to learn to ride a bike someday because we'll die if we don't know how to ride a bike. So uh, I love to inspire other people. Thanks for sh thanks for sharing that comment, Phil Jones. Uh, let's continue on here. How to breathe, what video is this? Yeah, let's check this out. Um, how to breathe while cycling tip of the day. Yeah, see, I have a little a little post-it note there on my stem. I sometimes do that, uh, just a little uh, little uh, trick I used uh, to, to get myself in the zone, you know, bullet point, sort of a list of things I wanna hit when I'm uh, uh, talking while riding my bicycle. I don't always do it. I have done it sometimes in more complicated things, but usually I'm just kind of, you know, you know, snap, 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 just rattling stuff off. And like I am now, I don't use a script or anything. I'm just talking, you know, I'm just talking, saying things how they are. Um, I D K E. Today we are cycling 12 miles with our class. So happy and crying, and the same back. Wish me good luck. Uh, canoeing, canoeing, two hours times two after cycling. Um, is that how you spell canoeing? Is there an E in there? Or no, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, 
<laughs> Especially when people type stuff on their phones, uh, the uh, autocorrect can be kind of messed up. Um, I'm surprised most more phones don't have like auto grammar correct yet. Uh, maybe they do. I don't know. I have an older f uh, smartphone. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so they two hours of I guess canoeing. Am I reading that right? At, at times two after cycling. Wow, that's a lot. I I canoed once when I was back in college. Uh, it was a very fun uh, trip down the river, down a river. Oh my gracious though, my uh, my shoulders or, or my arms were so achy afterwards for uh, rowing the boat because that's just, those are muscles I don't use very often when I'm riding a bicycle. Uh, is this kind of the canoeing motion. So uh, yeah, again, summer, warm weather's coming around. Oh, I'm an outdoorsy person and I love, I love the outdoors. I love warm weather. So, so looking forward to doing some more outdoor activities. Um, and spending more hours outdoors. We as human beings do not spend enough time outdoors. Number one, what, like a third, uh, almost maybe, depending on the person, a third of, of the day, a third of 24 hours we spend indoors, period, because we're sleeping. You know, most of us sleep indoors. Plus, you know, we work indoors, a lot of us who are not uh, working, you know, doing physical jobs outdoors, I guess. Um, so most people spend at least 90% of a 24 hour day, you know, day, night combined indoors. <clears throat> a lot of people spend maybe less than an hour outdoors. That's crazy. You know, walking from your car to the office, walking from your car to the grocery store, walking from your car to the house, and then we spend all this time in the house, which is why I want to, not to not to say I don't love doing these videos, but I want to get back out there. I want to ride my bike some more. So let's keep going on here. Uh, Jonathan Antonio writes, is single speed the way to go? I'm out in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Wow. Las Vegas. I thought about places... I'd be interested in moving to Las Vegas. Very hot, very dry, and can get pretty windy. So I don't know if I'd be moving there anytime soon. But uh, there is a climb, I guess climate when head to east to west, west to east, obviously a lot easier. So is single speed the way to go in Las Vegas? So I don't know what kind of uh, you know elevations are you dealing with in Las Vegas. I know you got the Sierra Nevada, but I guess it depends on what part of Las Vegas you live in. Um, but would single speed be the way to go? Sorry, I can't answer that question. Uh, it just depends on where you're going to really be riding. You say west to east is easier than east to west i guess because there's a hill i guess that's what he's what he's uh, saying here jonathan antonio is saying uh single speed is the way to go if number one you are not going very far so we're talking one two maybe three miles distance i'm talking about for the average joe here or the average jonathan uh, uh if you if you're mainly in an urban environment many urban centers downtown are often very flat I don't know why that is. Um, I guess it's just the way, at least a lot of street, a lot of cities are laid out, um, at least in my country, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure about Denver, Colorado, you know, kind of near the mountain, Rocky Mountains there. If How flat is Denver? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below if you know that. All I know is my city, and my city is very flat um, in the city, city limits. Uh, it does dip down as it gets closer to the river, so depending on, like if you live on a river, a lot of cities are on a river. Does Las Vegas have a river? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's the desert. Um, doesn't mean it can't have a river, but I live near a river. So uh, as you get closer and closer to the river, it dips down, but it's a very gradual grade. It just depends on how the city's laid out. So uh, one website I would recommend for that is check on the go map. Dot com and they have I think an elevation view thing I love that website because they got rid of another website I use a lot called walk jog run dot net I believe they got rid of that I love that website because it was so simple you didn't you didn't I don't believe you had to create an account so many websites they want you to give them your email address create a username create a password 
you know, jump through all these hoops just to use their software. And you know why it is. It's because uh, I'm getting on a rant here, but it's just like Google. Uh, there is a huge, oh man, I'm going to get so far off. I'm going to get so far off topic here. There is a huge business for data collection. YouTube's all about data collection. I mean, I, I'm aware that, yeah, it's, nothing's free. You're giving out all this data. But I want, I want to give out the data like, you know, how to ride a bike to work and stuff. I think that's really great. But it's just like in the United States. It's like, oh, we ha our federal government just said they completely admitted that, oh, yeah, we collect data on all phone users and we track their every movements. But we do it legally because we don't buy it. We don't get it f directly from you know AT and T or Verizon or whatever the phone companies. We buy it from third party vendors that buy the data, the GPS data from the phone companies, and we track people that way. And that's legal. That's the the court argument, at least I've read about. So yeah, I mean, people who have been superstitious of the government tracking their every every movement. Well, guess what? It's actually true. So anyway, uh, GPS on a bicycle like uh, Strava or whatnot, you know, I've actually, I have honestly, one of my excuses of not using Strava is because I have been um, superstitious about, you know, a, a, some other company. I don't know who, I don't know the owner of Strava. You know, I don't know any of these people personally, but people that I don't even know tracking my movements, you know, but you know, it's happening anyway. And my, if I'm carrying a smartphone with me, I am being tracked period, you know? So even if I turn off the GPS, I'm sure I'm still being tracked by the cell towers or whatever, you know? So I may actually start using Strava sometime in the near future because of that, because it's like, well, you know, the cat's out of the bag now. So it's like, oh, well, um, so getting back to Las Vegas and uh, west, east, north, south, um, riding a single speed bike, is that the way to go? Uh, again, only if you're going a short distance. Otherwise, I would not recommend a single speed bike. Single speed is not for most people. Single speed is for people who like to mash the pedals. Many people do not. They like to spin. I like to mash, which is not the best way to get a good workout, except that you are working your muscles more, but you're also wearing down your muscles faster before you can get up a good sweat, maybe, or get a good aerobic workout in. But I offset that because I do run. So I do do, uh, do, 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 do. I do uh, get some good aerobic activity uh, running. Um, on a bicycle, especially not a fixed gear bicycle, but just a single speed that has a coasting capability, um, that doesn't force you to spin really fast when you're like going down a hill, you know, like 120 RPMs or whatever, uh, I can just coast on down and chill out a bit. Um, I, I will say my, my cycling doesn't I don't probably ride my bike as hard as I run. So, you know, people say like, oh, I'm so impressed. You you rode up a 10% grade while talking. I could never do that or something. And it's like, well, you know, you know, it's because I'm just not working that hard when I'm riding my bike. I am I'm working hard and I am talking and I'm using, spending a lot of energy in that sense. And, uh, you, know, you know, being able to breathe and talk at the same time is difficult, but, um, you know, I push myself harder in other uh, activities, so you don't see me do that because I wouldn't be talking when I'm pushing myself harder doing other things, or when I'm just actually riding a bike and not talking. You know, I'm generally working harder. Uh, so anyway, uh, moving on, we're way off top. We're getting off top there. Protector, how does one perspire less on way going to work? And this was from Why Do I uh, Bicycle Commute. That's got like 100,000 views or something. Quite a lot of uh, views. Just change clothes at work, says Fetterman. Maybe washcloth off first. Easy. Okay, well, I've talked about this before. How to perspire or sweat less on uh, a way going to work. Let's go ahead and bring this video up. Let's see how it's doing here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, 170,000 views on this one. Um over uh, one and a half uh, thousand likes. Um, how do you sweat less? Number one is you can't stop your sweating from happening. You will sweat. Um, 
you will seemingly sweat less in a dry climate. You know, we're talking about the desert. We're talking about um, an area at high elevation. We're talking about the Western United States in general. Um, we're talking about an area where uh, there's not a lot of humidity. We're talking about low humidity areas or areas where you will sweat less. Uh, you cannot stop your body from sweating. Some people biologically just seem to sweat less than others. I believe that's due to diet and exercise. You exercise more, you have a more balanced diet, you will sweat maybe less. I don't know, maybe you'll sweat more. But important thing here is, <laughs> important thing here is for sweating is uh, wash yourself off before you get on the bike. Because if you're worried about smell, that will take care of the smell, okay? And then beyond that, sweating, you're going to have to towel off when you get to your destination, generally, unless it's very cold. That's my old Phoenix uh, flashlight there on my bike. Um, yeah, I remember that from years past. This is 2015. This was five years ago. April 17th, so almost exactly five years ago this video was. Um, anyway, uh, and this, this, this road right here is... Big Ben Boulevard. They've since repaved this road, uh, so that you can see the road's kind of in bad shape. Uh, it's not in horrible shape. It's pretty bad shape. <laughs> and um, perspiring, uh, sweating. Yeah. So uh, you know, take a shower before you go. Uh, you know, maybe cool yourself down before you go if it's the summertime. You know, take a cold shower or something. Get your heart rate down a little bit by taking a a colder shower. Um, what else? I would say the same th opposite if it was winter, you know, maybe take a warm shower before you go, or would that be a bad idea? Let me know in the comment section below. I think it's generally a good idea. Um, but for sweating, uh, what else can you do? You know, wear, wear fabrics that will wick the sweat from your body. What does wick mean? I hear that all the time. Wick, you know, wick the sweat. Well, it's going to try to pull it away from your body a little bit. Uh, why do humans sweat? Va evaporative cooling. You sweat, you get water on you, which is a great heat transfer medium, water, or, or fluid, uh, fluid-like water, you know, liquid. Um, and then you put air across that, and then it evaporates, and that cools you down. That works very effectively, again, in the desert, in dry climates. It works horribly in tropical environments. You know, Miami, Florida, Horrible, although you may get the wind, you know, wind does help. I like Florida because they have generally clean air because they're a peninsula, kind of like a little island. Anyway, getting off topic there. Um, but generally, yeah, human environments like Florida, uh, Alabama, Georgia, uh, Houston, Texas, very humid uh, climates. Uh, where yeah, you just you're gonna sweat like crazy, and it's not going to dry because it's so humid. The air just it just can't dry because the air is wet. All the air around you is moist. The 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 moisture content in the air you can't see it to the naked eye, but it's like a whole bunch of just rain that's just stuck, you know, in in you know frozen in time in the air, and you're just riding through it. I mean, we're t this is interesting stuff, physics and whatnot here. You know, like in the in the winter time, you know, uh, you know, you it's like sound can travel further because the air is cold and then it's also harder to push through the air when you're riding a bike. You can really feel this. It's like going up a hill with no wind. Uh, but it just feels like it's harder in the winter. And it's aerodynamically it is cuz you're wearing a bunch of baggy uh uh, jackets or whatever, but also it's just the air is harder to push through just because of physics. It's it's very interesting stuff actually. Uh, but in terms of sweating, uh, yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can do. I do have a video on that. Do a YouTube search, uh, bike blogger sweat. I'm sure it will come up. And I have a whole bunch of tips on there on how to sweat less. There is a way to sweat less. Uh, if you have any other uh, recommendations, uh, let others know in the comments section below, and I'm sure uh, uh, people would like to hear about it because we're always looking for ways to sweat less. You know, going slower can help a little bit, but stopping, having no airflow, just baking in the sun at a stoplight, you're gonna sweat like crazy. 
You know, it's kind of like fogging up glasses. If you wear glasses, you'll notice they often fog up when you stop and all the heat coming out of your nose and out of your mouth just rises up along the contours of your face, up underneath your glasses, and they'll fog your glasses uh, from that hot air and meeting the cold air when it's cold outside in the winter time. And I got some tips on that. Goggles may be a solution for that. Um, but it's kind of the same basic, you know, science about it, you know, temperature differences, humidity differences, because your breath is obviously very humid because it's moist. Um, so a couple more here and we got to, uh, we got to move on. We're going to go out and, uh, bike some more here today because it's a beautiful day outside it's nearing a uh, springtime here. Uh, jo- John Opossum writes, I remember mine was on this uh, 21 speed road bike, Sake Custom, I don't know if I pronounced it right, with French made Walber wheels. I got a lot of attention on that bike because we were fast. Man, the bikes I'm riding now in 10, 20 years, they'll be considered vintage. I wish I knew more about vintage bicycles. I do not though. Uh, 27 inch frame. Uh, Bontrager race lights, uh, aluminum handlebars, cremoli frame, lightweight, aerodynamic water bottle, fast bike. Share your first bike. So that was uh, John's first bike. Thanks for that, John. I uh, always like to hear about other people's bikes. Um, Brazil Cyclist writes, uh, my first bike was in the late 80s. Sounds like he's uh, my age. <laughs> I don't remember it, and I never had a bike commute. You never had a bike commute. You should go out there and uh, bike commute, Brazil cyclist. Hey, you know, I I love people watching my videos. Even if you don't bike commute, watch my videos. It may encourage you to recreationally bike, ride your bike more. Uh, more. The more bicyclists that are out there, the more people see bicyclists on the mountain biking trails, on the roads, on the multi-use paths, the more people will be aware that we exist in our city. And maybe that will encourage more people and more people and more people to ride. I've talked about this in a previous video, chicken and the egg sort of situation, whereas which comes first, bicycle infrastructure or just more bicyclists? Uh, And they feed on each other. So you need to do all of the above, of course. we got a whole bunch more comments here on this share your first bike video. Uh, Bill Baker writes, uh, was watching some of your videos from 2014 last night. <laughs> yeah, so my channel started in 2014. Wow. If you want to if you want to look at some bike blogger history, go back 5 years to my 2014 videos. I did not use a GoPro. I used more helmet cam stuff. Um, pretty interesting uh, older videos. The quality is just not there, though. The audio quality is horrible. Uh, But I leave everything online. I don't take stuff down. Uh, I leave everything online. Like I've said before, my mistakes and my, you know, successes or whatever of riding a bike on the road, I share everything I possibly can because I want to give a full breath of my life on a bike. That was kind of the whole idea of my channel to begin with was a diary of my bicycle adventures riding on the road generally not touring but actually just riding around my own city and bicycle commuting uh specifically uh cosmic uh pangolin writes my first commute was three miles to work on a single speed track bike (laughs) i love everything about that i'm not so crazy about the track bike thing but If it is a true track bicycle, it has a very aggressive geometry, which means you're going to be kind of leaning further over the bike. So as long as you have the flexibility and you can, your neck is okay with that, you can still pay attention to the road. That's cool. That's awesome. It's more aerodynamic. That's more efficient in that sense. Uh, But I really would recommend at least have a front brake, a hand brake on a uh, track bike, uh, just because you can stop faster, period. The only faster way to stop a bike without a handbrake is to run into a wall. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching uh, my bike FAQs, uh, everybody. Uh, bike facts. I don't know what I'm gonna really call it, but it's kind of a start. Kind of starting a playlist of all these uh, or answering comments now. 
Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, aren't so sure about this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this from me, give it a thumbs up. If, uh, if you uh, want to be my best friend forever and ever and ever and ever, give it a thumbs up and uh, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.